Welcome to Silverthorn Pulse. I'm Kim Jardim and I'm here with Town Manager Ryan Highland and we are here to give you a recap of the December 13th work session and Town Council meetings. Uh, this will be the only meeting for the month of December as it is the holiday season. Yeah. So let's kick off with work session. Uh, we had a, a couple of discussion items, one of which was the Cafe Re Food Rescue Executive Director, Diane Calvin, mm -hmm. came in to give some updates about the Pizza Hut building. And so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we've been um, working with Diane for a number of months now on kind of tuning that building up and getting it into a shape that is workable for uh, Cafe Food Rescue. And so um, she shared some pictures and uh, just kind of identified uh, where we are in the process. As you know, we've got the Burger King uh, that will be demolished as well. And so we've actually kind of mixed and matched a little with some of the um, sinks and other things that were in Burger King that were better. And we put them in Pizza Hut and just doing some light tune up because ultimately that the Pizza Hut will get demolished at some point. So trying to do just what we need to make that that workable. So we're pretty close. Uh, I think there's just a little bit more work to do and we're working on a lease. Uh, with Cafe Food Rescue that will get them in there and they can start actually working out of that space. So Great. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. That's a great partnership yeah. for the community. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So uh, also April municipal election updates. We've, we're going to have some town council seats open and yeah. there is some discussion about a lodging tax being on the ballot mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, we've got um, some council seats that are open. I know uh, recently there was a uh, kind of a uh, candidate forum, if you will, or folks who are interested in running for the uh, municipal seats in any of the uh, jurisdictions here could learn about that process. And it is uh, a process that kicks off pretty early. So starting in January, anybody that's thinking about running for town council uh, needs to tune in and check out the websites of uh, Silverthorne or wherever you live. And um, yeah, we'll see. Um, and like you mentioned, we have two other items that will be on the ballot in April. And so uh, coming up in January, uh, council will make official actions to put those on the ballot. So at the work session, they just looked at the final draft language for one, a lodging tax uh, increase going from six to eight percent in Silverthorne. Uh, that would um, be taxes on anybody staying in a hotel or a short-term rental. And the um, kind of first big projects out of the gate, uh, if that were to pass, is a rec center expansion, uh, which we've been talking about for years, uh, and huge dollars involved there, uh, and a new police facility. So um, far into the future, those funds would be used for other capital projects, but for a long period of time, those funds would be dedicated to pay for those, those two projects. So um, we're hoping that uh, Silverthorne residents are supportive of those two projects and uh, the general philosophy that you know visitors uh, use those services as well, and that uh, we have we think a, a bit more room uh, within the lodging tax, and we'll still be competitive, and it won't impact our visitorship. So, um, in January, we'll take those official steps, and then that'll be on the ballot in April. Great, excellent. Uh, there was also a mayor's managers commissioners meeting recently in early December. And uh, you gave some brief update, updates about that. Yeah, we um, go around the table there and just talk about what's going on in each of our communities. I think the big news of the day when we met uh, on the 7th was uh, Commissioner Elizabeth Lawrence uh, had announced that she would be stepping down. And so um, a lot of discussion about you know what that, that means moving forward and a lot of uh, gratitude for everything that she's done for our community. I know for Silverthorne specifically, most recently, um, her work on the uh, Wildflower Child Care Center and working with us to kind of set up the structure and get that built. And uh, I'm glad she got to see the ribbon cutting. So um, yeah, that was kind of the, the big news of, of the day. And uh, just other updates from everybody. Great. And also moving on to other updates, the Recreation Center remodel continues. It's already been several months yeah. uh, in and um, it's going well and we're looking forward to the completion of that. Yeah, we've been at it for a lot of months, different phases. Uh, we are currently still in the phase where everybody's sharing the kind of family locker room, which is pretty small, pretty tight. Um, and the final phase of construction is uh, what's going on right now in the new men's and women's locker room. So I think um, maybe by the end of January, 
fingers crossed, um, we will have those open. It's a, been a huge project, uh, $5 million project, and we've been open almost the whole time. We had a couple weeks of closure um, at two different points. But yeah, if folks haven't been in, um, fantastic new gym floor, uh, looks amazing, and just a reconfiguration and using the space, every inch of the space that's available. The new front desk is now open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The stairs are in a different place than they used to be. Yeah, it's a small room. For, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the Summit Combined Housing Authority is getting a new home in Frisco. It's the former Summit Daily News building. Yeah, we're hoping. Um, the Housing Authority, uh, which is basically managed by all of the municipal and county entity here, um, we've got that property under contract, so we haven't closed yet, but um, we're hoping to close in January. And, and really the, um, the thinking there, the current location is just not accessible for anybody. It's not welcoming. It's kind of buried within the county commons. Uh, and we want a true kind of storefront welcoming experience and really going in line with, um, we think the housing authority can, to, can just be a lot more uh, for our community. So part of that is uh, a new location. So we have uh, a good amount of funds at the housing authority, but we needed a little bit more to make that purchase. So each of the uh, towns in the county are going to kick in uh, to make that possible. So fingers crossed, we had the inspection recently. If we can get everything sorted out there on the property, we'll close in January. Great. So moving into the regular town council meeting, uh, we had a number of items on the consent calendar. Um, a couple of which are really routine, um, you know, approving minutes, but we had a resolution uh, adopting new financial policies, um, specifically a grants management policy. Yeah, if we um, are receiving any federal funds, uh, we would just want to make sure that our policies are all lining up with everything that the feds want, so did that. Um, uh, a uh, subdivision improvement agreement uh, for a development, uh, change in ownership, and some new art board members. Yes, so for the um, art board, there is a new member named Dave Ratner, and Brittany Josie joins the art selection committee. So welcome to yeah, them. Yeah, welcome. And there were a couple of liquor board items, uh, just transfers of liquor licenses mm -hmm. um, within our community, pretty routine. Yeah. Um, and there was also just a renewal for High Country Healing of their marijuana license. Yeah, we have one shop in town, and this was the annual renewal. Uh, and there's an inspection, and everything always goes smoothly. Um, Nick Brown and his crew at High Country do a good job. Great. And then also, uh, we had, in, under public hearings, we had a conditional use permit for Silverthorne Power Sports. There's some new owners there. Mike Stovkin has sold the business. Yeah, after many, many years um, in Silverthorne uh, with the Yamaha Power Sports operation, uh, Mike is moving on to the next chapter and so we've got some new owners. And so uh, conditional use permit there, which is essentially kind of what um, was the same that Mike had operated under. So um, same type of business, new owners. Um, had folks there uh, also just thanking Mike for all the years of support uh, for all the gearheads in Silverthorne. <laughs> Definitely. He was a great addition to the community. Um, we also had a resolution approving a minor subdivision and final, final site plan for the tree line row homes. And that's where the Bank of the West used to be situated. That's correct. And so this is um, this had been previously looked at by council, but this is the final approval and more traditional downtown development. So retail on the ground floor, residential above. Uh, this particular development will be uh, rental residential. Uh, and yeah, if you're not familiar with where the bank was, it's been gone for a little while, but this is right behind the Stinker gas station. Yes. Uh, and yeah, right across from the Bluebird Market. Excellent. Uh, let's see, a couple of um, ordinances here. We had um, the, oh, related to the Adams Avenue extension. So that will be the connection between the Willowbrook neighborhood and the Smith Ranch neighborhood. Yeah, I had a couple of uh, second readings. So we've talked about these previously, but yeah, connecting um, the Smith Ranch neighborhood over to Willowbrook and through Trent Park with that expansion that's gonna happen uh, next summer. So a couple items related to that. And then also in the same area we have um, when we designed the Smith Ranch, we had accommodated, there was an access easement that needed to go up to the low ranch, uh, but we had not actually uh, accomplished the paperwork. So a uh, little misstep there, but taking care of that now. Excellent. 
And then we've got one more ordinance um, here, including and excluding certain properties into and from the boundaries of the 4th Street Crossing Business Improvement District. So this is just some routine paperwork. Yeah, we've got a business improvement district um, that uh, is in the downtown at 4th Street Crossing. And so as they get uh, close to um, occupying the final portions of that, just making sure that uh, the residential pieces are not in the district and the commercial is, and so uh, all as originally planned from the outset. Great. And under action items, um, there's an ordinance authorizing you, the town manager, to execute a contract for the purchase of a property on Bryan Avenue. And uh, this is a housing unit, I understand, that the yeah. town plans on purchasing. A nice unit that um, if we get through second reading, we'll close on in uh, January. Uh, it's, in a, it's in a commercial area, but it's a second story, two bedroom, uh, great little unit uh, that we became aware of coming up for sale. And so intention there is to purchase it put a deed restriction on it, and then have it available to uh, workforce only, so. Excellent. And the, in the conclusion of the regular meeting, there was an executive session related to two workforce housing opportunities in the town. Yeah, we have been um, talking with a developer. The town owns a parcel at uh, the signal at Annie Road, right where you would leave Target there. And so we've been talking to a developer about uh, partnering to develop that. So just some more conversations on that. And then also uh, just an update for council at the 4th North development behind Eclectic. Uh, there's planned uh, some workforce housing and just some conversations about um, what might be the future there and some changes maybe, And but ultimately we'll, we'll still be workforce housing. So some exec session conversations. Great. And that concludes our meeting for December. We won't be back until January, I that guess. That was it. So, so happy holidays. And happy holidays to everyone. We'll be back.